Sam, and I'm here talking about the sign of cancer. Cancer is ruled by the moon. That archetype of compassion and the heart where we feel life deeply and we often disguise our feeling nature, that deep pure love in our heart in the emotions. The emotions are like a veil. They're like the clothes we wear on top of our heart. The heart is the deep core self because most of us are in fact disconnected from it. We don't even really know the difference between the heart and our emotions. But this is the this is the evolutionary path of the moon. And the unique self and unique identity that the cancer person is here to discover. We connect with that pure love in our heart through things like devotion and selfless love, not with the desire-filled love that we have with people that we have relationships with, like, or people even like family members, wherever our desires are interacting with the world, we generate a lot of emotion and we mistake those emotions to be our feelings or our deeper feeling nature rather. So we're much more than just our emotions. The emotions are like the waves on the surface of the ocean, but much deeper than that is the devotion in the heart. So this is what cancer is here to understand and find out. What's deeper than just my feelings and my emotions. So it's a sign where we are trying to connect with that pure love because it's sattvic. It's where we want to dissolve the boundaries that exist between us and others because it's the water. It's the source of that water. It's a cardinal water sign where we initiate emotional connection or what we experience as emotional connection. We're really trying to initiate love and selfless love. But because we're unrealistic and we need to put up boundaries and those boundaries are painful, they're related to Saturn, which I'll get to, there's a, there's a stress and fear and worry of how much can I flow with all people and how much do I need to, you know, quote, protect myself and all of those other things that don't usually feel very good to a cancer person. So, like the symbol of the crab, it's, it has a kind of hard shell, which again, that's actually related to Saturn, but it also is very much about its um, sort of uh, possessions and its comfort zone and its, you know, how a crab will tuck all of its legs underneath itself and um, these things are related to the sun ruling the second house. So the, the sun as ruling the second house shows where cancer really puts a lot of importance on things like money and family and values and it's a great source of strength for them wherever the sun rules, wherever the Leo you know, wherever the sign of Leo falls is a, is, a, is a place of great strength for us because it's where the sun is ruling. So this is why you'll see Cancer put so much emphasis on their family, on their values, and of course they're very connected, family and values, very much second house thing, things. And of course that also can make Cancer um, people quite materialistic, you might say, because having money makes us feel more safe because again, the moon is where we're, it's where we feel vulnerable to others and so when we have enough structure we feel like we can then relax. It's like the boundaries of the ocean. Money is like, you know, resources give a strong container to, you know, so the heart can flow. If we're in a place that's dangerous and there's nothing solid, then we can't relax into our deeper nature. So the sun as ruling the second house gives that solid structure, but cancer needs to be careful not to become too materialistic or too sort of greedy and put too much importance on um, the outer forms of value rather than the inner forms. And they need to evolve 
their relationships with their family and establish more independence, again the sun, rather than dependence and then frustration. This is one thing that cancer can tend to do is to see others as an extension of themselves, especially their family members and whatnot, and then get into kind of controlling, passive-aggressive controlling behaviors. Oh, I'm so sad. Everything you do makes me sad as a way to kind of control people. I'm just so sensitive. <laughs> and every and I'm just always the one who wants to nurture everyone. No one loves anyone as much as me, and I'm always the one who's sad because, uh, you know, <laughs> got to... So the sun is ruling the second house, shows the need to establish their individual values and not burden others with a sort of passive-aggressive thing. Mercury is ruling the third and twelfth house, also ha shows a quality of their communication. Third house, of course, is speech and courage, but you see how they're how their courage and their ego and their self-will, it's ruled by Mercury, which is changing a lot. So they're always like, is this what I want? Is this my desire? Is this, is this what I want to experience? Is this what makes me happy? Because Mercury also rules the 12th house, if I'm not sure. And again, when they assert their self-will, which is the third house, there's a sense of loss, because the third lord also rules the 12th house of loss. So. Let's say, for example, this situation about the family and the values, someone in their family says something they don't like, or they start to feel that thing that makes them feel, you know, that makes them feel, um, you know, not appreciated or whatever, and then Mercury comes out to express it. Oh, but what about when I did this? And it comes out in this way that's a little inconsistent. And then once they do it, once they assert their own identity and their own will, immediately they feel a sense of loss. And they're like, uh, they remember the times when they said it and then they felt bad about it, they regretted it. So Mercury ruling the third and twelfth gives that avoidance. But it also shows where they're, where they're working through a lot of their ego. You know, they have a very weak self-image and a, a, a sort of weak ego in this regard. And again, you can say that's good. It's, it's better to not judge it. It has a benefit, which means they're not necessarily so egotistical. They're always ready to serve and be devoted. But it also shows where they, this is why they tend to feel that, oh, nobody appreciates me. Well, it's because they don't appreciate themselves. Again, it always reflects back. So, again, it's a sign that's best used for, like, nurturing of, like, children, where you can give your selfless love and not feel like you're being taken advantage of. Children, pets, other situations where we serve selflessly and don't ask for anything in return, that's the highest quality of cancer. So their interactions with others through the ego, which is the third house, and shows they do it, and they kind of back up and they try it. This is why cancer, you know, even the way they walk, even the crab walking sideways. You know, literally the way we walk has a lot to do with third house. It's how we're advancing through the ego, through our identity towards something. It's kind of like the sideways walking of the, of the cancer forward and then kind of back a little bit. Third Lord also rules the twelfth. Then we get into Venus, which rules the fourth and the eleventh. So again, fourth house has to do with our heart, our home, our comfort zone. Similar to second, but it's more emotional and internal for us rather than our, rather than our group unit, which is the second house of comfort zone. The fourth house is our internal emotional comfort zone. And the eleventh house, which is the highest desire and ambition. So understand it, it's quite literal. The Cancer's highest desire, eleventh house, is to feel connected to the heart, fourth house, and have it be this beautiful, wonderful experience where everybody's happy, Venus. It also shows why the eleventh house is, why, why Venus is a cruel planet for Cancer, because again, it's this high desire to be calm and peaceful. I'm going to be calm and peaceful if I have to work my whole life. I'm going to be calm and peaceful, right? Eleventh house creates pressure, like it's my highest desire and ambition. And again, it's also Venus stuff, so it's this kind of beautiful... And again, it also relates to things like beautiful home, beautiful relationship. Feeling beautiful all the time, feeling the joy and beauty is the highest desire and ambition. Now, it also shows where relationships are 
confusing for cancer. Very important to understand the difference between Venus love and moon love. Venus love is the conditional love between two adults where we compromise and harmonize our energy. I get this, you get that, I have a healthy sense of self-respect and boundaries and I honor your healthy self-respect and boundaries and it's equal. Cancer, nothing to do with that. Literally nothing to do with it. It's, I want to feel love everywhere. And there's not that equality for cancer. It's, again, there's no equality with the mother's love for the child. The child does nothing really to reciprocate through actions for years, especially when they're an infant. They throw up in the mother's face and yell at them. Even when children are growing up, they act like little monsters. We love them anyway. Unconditional love. If you try to do that with your romantic partners, there's enormous suffering. And this is one reason why cancer has a painful relationship with partners often, because of this. Because their tendency is to want to selflessly love everything. And then Venus is also gives them their highest desire to have it be this beautiful romantic relationship as well. So then they try to selflessly love the partner, try to selflessly love all of these other equals, and it just feels so painful. This is why they get into that thing I said at the beginning. I'm always the one compromising so much. Well, they don't feel that bad when they're compromising with their child and they're, and they're giving all the love. They don't feel bad when they're giving all the love to their pets. It's just with other equals. This is shown by that Venus. Mars, now we're going to get into some powerful stuff with Cancer. Mars and Jupiter especially. Mars rules their fifth house and their tenth house. It shows them to be great advocates for children, like I said, and how their duties and responsibilities really revolve around children and things they want to create, their heart's desire. So one thing about Cancer, man, you think they're these sort of tepid little creatures, then start mistreating children or students or something else where they that they love and they realize is valuable and worthwhile. You'll see the claws come out and everything else come out. They will fight. They're formidable. They're the toughest, one of the toughest little buggers in the zodiac when it comes to, you know, as I say, defending children or students or you'll see Mother Dorga come out and fierce, in her fiercest form, if somebody messes with children or pets or, and that's that's Mars. It shows the necessity for Cancer to get out of their emotional world and start to take on some duties and responsibilities. And how those duties and responsibilities should revolve around things they love, things that reflect their heart's desire, because Mars rules both the fifth house and the tenth house. So, often those things that relate to their heart's desire has to do with, again, like children, students, and other defenseless creatures who need their protection, right? Mars, protecting children, right? So it's not Venus ruling the 5th and 10th house like we have for Capricorn, it's Mars ruling the 5th and 10th house, which is, I'll step up and beat the hell out of anybody who tries to abuse or mistreat children, and they're willing to step up and be seen and accounted for, which is the 10th house. So again, when they're, not, when they're not doing those kinds of duties, they're kind of meek. So this shows, Mars gets, shows the need for them to step up and assert themselves that way. So then Jupiter rules the sixth and the ninth houses. Ninth house, of course, has to do with guru, teachers, higher wisdom. And sixth house has to do with service, working hard, overcoming the obstacles in life. So it really shows, you know, when the sixth house ruler is also ruled by a natural benefic and a functional benefic like this, it shows how this person can really grow through life's challenges and life's problems. Again, you can also make it very literal. Again, the thing about taking care of children, for example, is there's a lot of sixth house stuff. Changing the diapers, picking up after them, being of service. For cancer, being of service, which is the sixth house, is the greatest source of wisdom and teaching and inspiration. They learn the most about themselves and about life when they're in that role. Again, it all conspires back to those qualities of cancer, which are about selfless love. When there's selfless love, there is no effort. As my guru Ama says, when there's love, there's no effort. So, when they're aligned with love, 
and caring and selfless love, not the conditional desire love. That's really not love that we have with our romantic partners. With our romantic partners, we're there to learn compromise. Of course, we can selflessly love them, but the thing that makes the relationship work isn't love. It's the capacity to compromise and to deal with the unique boundaries that are happening there. But with children, with pets, with things that we selflessly love, the real theme is, is that we love them enough to do the hard work without feeling like we're being abused and without feeling like a servant. You can see it clearly with cancer. The sixth Lord is also the ninth Lord. Give them something to be devoted to, something to serve that's higher than themselves, and their greatness emerges. It's a sattvic sign. Of course, Jupiter is a sattvic planet. This is where you see the gunas really line up as well. And then we have big old Saturn, the last planet for them, ruling that seventh and eighth house shows how they can experience a lot of these painful insecurities in romantic relationships, right? So the seventh lord is Saturn, which of course, Saturn is Saturn. He gives that awareness of difficulty and stress, pressure, um, in the field of, in the realm of other people, which is as the seventh lord and also the eighth lord, which shows that sense of loss, insecurity, fear, and stress. Cancer is always aware, but you know, they know once they get involved with someone, once they, once they give their heart, it, they're, it's hard for them to just stop. Again, because Saturn makes their commitments very deep, very strong, just like with their family members. Again, it's not always romantic partners, it's other people in general. But we can see with the romantic partner, it really comes into fruition because, of course, once we have our family, we're usually not, we're usually not gonna give up on them so easily. So there's not the tendency to just kind of shun that part of our life. But with cancer, one thing they need to really be careful of is as they go through life and they deal with relationship pain is to not just not just cordon that part of their life off and say, I'm not going there anymore. I'm not I'm not getting that anymore. It's too painful. There's too much, you know, fear and vulnerability there. So you can see this is why cancer is always kind of shy a little bit. You know, part of it is Mercury also ruling the third and twelfth house, that kind of shyness when they approach or whatever, but a big part of it is also Saturn because knowing how to establish boundaries and still let life flow through the heart is the big trick for them. Um, and Saturn being opposite the moon, you know, Saturn ruling that seventh house and the eighth house shows where a lot of their painful insecurities about becoming intimate um, are revealed. So. That's Cancer and another fascinating sign in the Zodiac.